let's continue from the last video by making the hinge arms that go across the front of this uh, boiler door. So I'm going to select this part, the front of the boiler. I'm going to uh, select these hinges, Alt and Q, Shift and B. Okay, deselect everything. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go into Create Panel, Standard Primitives, Plane. And I'm just going to drag out a plane that fits between the hinge, you know, like between that dark, dense area, that's the edge of the hinge. So we're going to start right here, drag out a rectangle that goes to roughly, I don't know, right around here. Make sure it's, it's kind of centered on the hinge area. And um, okay, so now we have it. Let's change the amount of segments. So we're going to come over here and let's make that two. Let's make this. Ooh, nine looks good. Okay. And let's go to perspective. Let's take a look at it. Pull it forward so it's ahead of the door. Zoom in, F3. There we go. Okay, so right now it's hanging out there in front of the door. And what I want to do is kind of do this. That looks good. And then I'm going to convert it to an editable poly by right clicking on the stack from the drop down, pick edit poly. Okay. And now, um, Let's go to Freeform, where it says Grid, we'll go to Draw on Surface, pick the surface, pick that boiler, front of the boiler, one tick, so it's 0 0.100 offset. Let's conform. Full strength should be set to 100. Conform should be set to 100. Okay, and fall off. I believe fall off is kind of like a, a brush size adjustment, so I kind of want to do that this time. This way we can maybe stop conforming at a certain point. So now with that done, let's try to conform. I'm just brushing along. Okay, I'm going to do one more set. And that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is um, I conform most of it, but we wanted it to hook up with this hinge eventually and meet up and have a smooth transition. So now I'm going to just do some manual adjustments. It's part of how things get done sometimes. I'm going to just pull this a little forward as well. So making that transition less bothersome. You know, it's not as, as dramatic as it was. And then um, what I'm going to do is come here. I'm going to shift and drag, kick it back. We're going to kind of manually create like a cylinder. That's the back of the hinge. Alt and L. I'm going to just kick this back this way. And I'm using uh, the hinge itself as a guide just so I know where to play stuff. And keep your spacing kind of even. You see that I'm ref referring to this group of polygons when I create this one and so on. So if you do that, you're likely to come out with something that feels the way you want it to. So I shift and drag that. I'm just pull this back a little bit. Now I'm going to go across the back side. I'm not so worried about, but now we'll come forward and I'll once again use that hinge as a guide and I'll come forward again, may kick it back a little bit and now I'll just do this. There we go. Okay, so now I don't think the end of the hinge should be a perfect straight piece. So I'm going to hit Shift and X to edge constraint. I'm just going to move these back a little bit. And now we'll add a shell modifier in the stack. Um, there we go. Give it some thickness and a turbo smooth. F4. Okay, we can kind of see the hinge now doesn't look too bad. Um, let's go back down to the base level. And what I want to do is grab the top and bottom edge, Alt and L for a loop selection. And then we also want to grab these two. This way we'll maintain a roundness to that edge when we uh, subdivide. We're going to do a chamfer and right click that value out and then just slowly by hand. That looks good to me. Say OK. And now when we check out the hinge, add another turbo smooth iteration. That's more like what I was hoping for. Um, it can come forward just a touch. So yeah, there we go. We have a little thickness showing. And if you need to adjust the top to bottom, it's not a big deal. You can see that there's a little space on the top. It's, it's not bothersome, but if you want it perfect, oop, undo your edge constraints and just give it a little push up. And there we go. So now we have the hinge. Um, let's call it hinge. Hinge strap. Dash L1. Okay, and let's make sure these pieces, if we haven't named them and we didn't, we're going to grab both, go to Tools, Rename Objects, and we'll just call it Hinge underscore Pivot Numbered and Rename. Okay. Um, 
Let's grab the hinge strap, shift and drag it down so it's at the other location, just like that. Okay. And now what you'll do later is uh, we're going to grab the pieces from the axles of the train and, and make a pin that goes through there. We're going to repurpose that hardware. And we're also going to grab some bolts and maybe put them on the, the straps of the hinge. So I'm going to do that while the video is paused. And when we come back, um, I'm going to make a little semicircle of pipe that comes along the bottom, has a few clamps holding it in place. And then we're just about done with the, the boiler section. So I'm going to pause the video.